For a very long time, medical and psychological professionals have noticed a very interesting phenomenon. Some children who are living in a seemingly healthy and normal environment failed to grow and failed to thrive. So in this video, I will share with you guys a very, very interesting phenomenon called psychological dwarfism. So the definition of psychological dwarfism, as the name implies, is a severe retardation of growth. In one paper, author suggested a more statistical definition of the psychological dwarfism, which is a marked linear growth retardation below third percentile for ages, as well as significant delayed maturation. At the beginning, people start to see this phenomena in children living in orphanages after the First World War. So those children, even though they are not eating, say, the most nutritious food, but at least they are fed and they have a roof above their head. Majority of those children, they have a normal developmental curvatures. So their body and mind developed it just like any other kid. But a small proportion of them just stop growing. When compared to normal kids, they look much, much younger and much, much shorter. Since then, medical and uh, psychological practitioners get very baffled by this phenomenon because they cannot find a proper explanation to this. As I said before, they have enough food and they have enough calorie intakes to support and maintain a normal development. However, they just failed to do that. And the most interesting thing here is that when the children form a fairly warm and nurturing relationship with a caregiver, normally the nurse is taking care of them, those psychological dwarfs would grow back to the same level as their peers in a very short period of time. Since then, different professionals started to dig into this question. Even though right now we still do not understand the exact mechanism behind it, with the works of generations of scientists, we're having some deeper understanding into this. So in this paper, Psychological Dwarfism, a critical review of the evidence, Authors reviewed different evidences on psychological dwarfism, and the most interesting result on the psychological dwarfs are their endocrinology. They found that the psychological dwarfs have a significantly reduced growth hormone as well as an overactivated HPA axis, which is the system for the stress responses and cortisol. And authors have concluded two causes for the psychological dwarfism. The first one is the deprivation or the lack of some necessary positive elements between mother and children. And essentially, I think this is not just mother and child, but primary caregiver and the child. And the second cause is the presence of additional negative stresses in the environment. For instance, an angry, hostile mother. So those two causes can be understood better in terms of, say, operant conditioning. So the first cause, the lack of necessary positive element, is essentially the reduction of something positive. The interaction and the dynamics between mother and children are emotionally very, very rewarding and very essential for the development of child as well. If a child do not have this part, then essentially it is a gigantic reduction of something positive. And the second cause is the increase of negative, something negative directly experienced. And I think this is not just limited to the interaction or the dynamics uh, between mother and child or primary caregiver and the child. But those negativities can be in other forms as well. For instance, I am living in a war zone or I have been constantly molested or sexually abused. All those things are the stresses or the negativities in the environment. So from the endochronological evidence, we can see that those psychological doors have a overly activated HPA axis, which is the stress axis. And as Alexander Lubin has said, when we are stressed, we're essentially tapping into the stored energy to cope 
with the environment or cope with what is extremely demanding. Therefore, in the children's development, if there are a lot of stress they need to cope with and they need to survive through, then very naturally they will not have both the physical and the emotional resources uh, to grow their body. And I think the reduction of the level of growth hormone is the result of the overactivation of HPA axis. And from another angle, we can see that when we are experiencing a lot of stress, we are activating the sympathetic nervous system, which is preparing us to fight or flight or freeze. But only when we engage and activate the parasympathetic nervous system that we start to regenerate and grow. So if we are exposed to chronic and extreme stimulus, then we are forced to engage the sympathetic nervous system and all hormones like adrenaline, cortisol were rushing through our brain and our body and we will never engage the parasympathetic system and we will never actually regenerate. As it is mentioned in the summary section of the paper, it is said that the psychological or psychosocial stress mediated through the central nervous system, which is the sympathetic and parasympathetic, caused the marked retardation of growth, hormonal changes, as well as behavioral changes. And also, I think psychological dwarfism uh, makes sense in terms of evolution or in terms of survival. To some degree, I think uh, psychological dwarfism helped those individuals to survive. Because as you look so much younger and cuter, in comparison to your peers, you are much more likely to get attention from potential caregivers. And as we talked about before, when those children get enough warmth, their body will shoot back to a normal state very quickly. So I think psychological dwarfism can be understood as a natural mechanism for children or for individuals who are underdeveloped or undercared to get attention and to get the necessary care from the environment or from the social connection. And the other thing it shows is that the emotional care, the engagement and the bounding with a caregiver is crucially important for children's development. Before, we used to think that the only thing we need to provide for the children is essentially to keep them alive, to give them food and water and uh, shelter. But with psychological dwarfism, we can see that just by providing children with those uh, basic needs is not enough for them, at least not enough for all of them to develop properly and uh, healthily. The emotional care and the emotional engagement with the children are crucially important for their development. Well, so that is all for today's video. I hope you found it interesting. If you liked it, please sub, share, and like, and I will see you in my next video. So here is a Chinese YouTuber whom I assume is suffering from psychological dwarfism. You can see from the clips that he almost has the same height compared to the kids next to him. He's a repairman living in a Chinese village and helping his neighbors often for free uh, to repair the TVs and other electronic stuff. And he's very much loved for his personality. And when compared to other adults, we can also see a very clear difference in heights. And in some other videos in his channel, we can also see that his family, his brother, his parents are perfectly normal. And also, I think he does not have some typical dwarf features, which is why I think he is suffering from the psychological dwarfism. But I think his videos are very interesting and reflect some aspect you don't see about China. So you can check out his channel and subscribe for some supports. I'll link it in the description.